everything at her, they get nothing. Emily is just standing there like a statue. Oh, oh my God. God. if you haven't watched it. Also known as Dodgeby. Last month, like many of you, I watched Ludwig's Creator Dodgeball Tournament. Teams comprised of streamers from various platforms like Kick, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook competed in a standard dodgeball tournament to determine which platform was the best. After watching the event, I walked away with a few takeaways regarding who was the best player, who was the best team, and overall rankings. At the end of the tournament, they gave the MVP to Caroline Kwan, citing a few amazing catches that she made to clutch out the championship for her team, Kick. I wasn't surprised by this at all. Caroline was amazing throughout the tournament, making amazing catches, dodging balls left and right. She had great ball placement and phenomenal game awareness, always seeming to know who to target, when to target them, and how to tear the other team apart piece by piece. After watching the tournament, I listened to a bunch of these streamers air their grievances and share their opinions about the results. They all had their own subjective experiences from playing in the tournament, and I had my own subjective experience from watching it. We all had our own opinions. But that's all we had. Opinions. Hassan, I think you surprised me with how terrible <laughs> he was on the court. They played a, a an already atrophied team, uh, and then... You know, they just kind of went all the way to the top. Ted said, uh, I forget the exact phrase. He said, like, yeah, we probably would have done better if, you know, we didn't have cutie. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, I uh, was frustrated with the bracketing uh, that Ludwig had, the bracket had put We were in the easy bracket. And we were, even though we were in the easy oh. bracket, no, I, I'm... <laughs> top seed was so, YouTube. So that's Can you explain on seeding. the scouting report why YouTube was a top seed? Yeah. Can we talk about how Saikuno <laughs> shambled around like a Dark Souls zombie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... Dodgeball isn't the game of opinions. It's a game of objective facts. So today, I'm going to be putting all of those opinions to rest. I spent the past few weeks compiling data from this tournament. Box scores, statistics, rankings, everything. Every throw, every strike, every catch, and every single moment that occurred in this tournament is captured in this data set. For reference, there are over 2,400 data points. All of the data on every player and every team is aggregated, analyzed, and visualized in the charts and tables that I'm about to show you. And the results might be a little shocking. Let's get into them. Before we get into the hard numbers, let me tell you a little bit about my process for collecting this data. For starters, what we're looking to capture for every match are four basic data points. Targets, the number of times each player throws a ball at an opposing player. Strikes, the number of times each player hits an opposing player with a ball. Catches, the number of times each player catches an incoming ball from an opposing player. And outs, how many times each player got out via strike or catch. Based on those four data points, we can run two simple calculations. Accuracy, the percentage of targets that resulted in strikes. And points, which are the total number of strikes, plus two points for every catch. Let's run through a quick example just to make sure we're on the same page. Let's say Ludwig targets Slime. This will result in zero points and no outs and no response for either team. If Ludwig successfully lands the target, that would result in a strike, which would mean one point for Ludwig and Slime is out. However, if Ludwig targets Myth, again, this will result in zero points and no outs. Myth catches the ball, that will result in two points, one out for Ludwig and Myth's team earning a respawn. 
Then let's say Myth targets Saikuno and lands a strike. Again, he earns one point and Saikuno is out. Over here on the right, you can see the box score from that result. Using all of the player data aggregated up, we can then determine what the average player would look like in this tournament. Here's what the average player and team produces in one match. We can use this average player as a benchmark to measure every other player's performance. We can then use that information to come up with a watered down version of something called VORP. VORP, or value over replacement player, is what we'll use to rank every player from best to worst. The average player has a 16.7% accuracy, so if you had a 17.7% accuracy, that would make you 1% better than the average player. One quick note here is about targeting statistics. I had to do a little bit of creative interpretation, to put it gently. Let's just say we're being very generous with everybody. We want everybody to be shown in the best light possible. So in moments like this, I tried to take the perspective of the player and give my best guess as to who they were trying to hit. Every action throughout the match is captured here in the play-by-play, -play, and the information in the play-by-play -play log is fed into a couple of formulas like this one to calculate the final box score statistics. And the data in the box scores, like this one, are aggregated together in order to calculate the statistics for players and teams. Before I get into the results, I do just want to say one thing, and that is that I don't want any problems with anybody at all. This was objective data, and I fully acknowledge that there are certain intangibles for every player that I am not able to capture, how much fun they're having, what you know, how much of a team player they are, okay? All that stuff is very, very important and valuable, and I want to acknowledge and recognize that people play roles in these games, and those roles are not always captured in the data. That also is one of the most important things about this tournament, and part of the reason why I enjoyed watching it so much is because people were having fun and smiling and laughing the whole time throughout the tournament. That's what really made it fun to watch for me. I had fun putting together the data, actually, because I love puzzles and games and rankings and all that kind of stuff. Also worth noting, the thing that I love the most about this tournament is the way it brought people together. I love events like this because they unify everyone, streamers and platforms and teams and viewers all together and communities. It brings everyone together to watch a wholesome, fun game of dodgeball where people are throwing foam balls at each other, and it's a great time. So it's all love on my end, no hate on anybody at all. That being said, here are the final player and team rankings. Pause the video if you want to take a closer look at these, but we'll get into the results. To simplify everything, I broke all the players into four groups based on statistical performance. First off, we have the fun timers who are out there having a great time and trying their best and just smiling and laughing. I consider myself a part of this group because I had a great time watching this tournament. Next up, we have the competitors and the stars over here who are basically third and second quartile players. And last but not least, we have the all dodgeball first team who are the true all-stars of this tournament. Now, there's only one MVP of this tournament and that's Caroline and she fucking earned it. The catches that she made at the end of the championship game were absolutely epic. If we can compare this to the NBA, for example, I really think Caroline's award was like the NBA Finals MVP, which is arguably the most important award of the season. But I did want to take a moment to give out a few of my own awards to some players that I think deserve some recognition as well. First off, the Deadeye Award, which goes to Slime. Slime was 10% more accurate than the average player. He didn't throw the ball the most, but when he did, he landed the most. Next up, we have the Volume Shooter Award, which goes to Michael Reeves with the most targets per game at 41. This is an insane statistic the more you look at the rest of the players. Also going to Michael Reeves is the Striker Award, which is the most strikes per game at 8.3, and the Ball Magnet Award, which is the most times targeted per game at 37.7. For those that watched the event, you know that Michael was an absolute legend throughout this entire event, but I did want to point out that his game against Twitch in the group stage was the best individual player performance of the entire tournament. 17 points, 34% accuracy, 44 targets, he was just incredible this game. Now, he didn't perform as well in the later rounds. We didn't get a lot of those signature jumping dodges that we saw against Twitch, but I think that may have been because he was carrying the massive weight of his entire team. I mean, Jackson, Tyson, Jordan, Michael Reeves, game six. Okay, look at this man. I do think his underperformance in the later rounds can be chalked up to the fact that Michael chose not to wear shoes. Absolute Sigma move, by the way. But I think his feet eventually started hurting and he couldn't move around as well. Quick message for Michael, by the way, I totally get it and I agree that not having shoes gives you a better grip. But maybe next time we try a nice pair of climbing shoes like these that are very flexible and very light 
and they also have very good grip. I'm just saying it's worth some maybe next time. Maybe you try it out and just see how it goes. And then maybe if you're not working out, then you take off the shoes later. Next up, we have the Untouchable Award, which goes to Sapnap for the least outs per game at 2.8. Sapnap was a great dodger. He's very light on his feet, and he also has a really great unorthodox movement pattern, which I think threw off a lot of his opponents. And last but not least, we have the Tournament MVP Award, which goes to Ludwig. Ludwig averaged 13.5 points per game, 7.5 strikes per game, 3 catches per game, all with a 25% accuracy, which means 1 in 4 balls that he threw were landing. I know some people don't want to hear this, it was his event, and people are saying that he stacked the tournament in his favor. And yes, his stats were partially padded by playing Team Facebook in the group stage, but he really was great in this entire tournament, the best overall player through all 3 stages. Now, a few comments that I wanted to address from two podcasts. First off, Ludwig says that he and Michael were like the Shaq and Kobe of the tournament, which I wanted to address really quickly. While Team YouTube was certainly one of the best teams in the tournament, maybe the second best overall team, based on the data, Michael and Ludwig were for sure the best duo, just ahead of Moises and Caroline and Myth and Slime. But just in case we forgot, Kobe and Shaq did win three championships back to back to back together. So... Another claim made on the yard by Ludwig is that Team Podcast was like a team of five Kwame Browns, which if you don't get that reference, that is absolutely brutal. I do just want to point out here that although they didn't advance past the group stage, Aiden and Nick were actually a phenomenal duo. Also, Team Facebook was for sure the worst team in the tournament, but huge credit to Nick Allen who carried his team as much as he could. He was like LeBron on the 2007 Cavaliers. Another claim made by Ludwig and a lot of other people was that Team Kick was OP. They won the tournament, but how much statistically better were they in each category? Well, they were better than the average team in literally every category. More targets, more strikes, less outs, more catches, 4% more accurate than the average team. These guys dominated. Compare them to Team YouTube or Team Chess Boxing, who had the big advantage of volume. They simply just threw the ball more than the other teams did, but were otherwise kind of mediocre in the other categories. All this to say, Team Kick was not just OP, they were like the NBA All-Star team. All five of their players finished in the top 50% of players overall. Nobody was getting carried here. On the Yard podcast, there was also a little bit of a debate about seeding, a point that was also made on the Fear and podcast by Hassan. Which brings me to the last part of this video. Ludwig, come here. Sidebar. Listen. Boys. The plan is simple. The concerns about seeding are actually 100% valid. The way around them is to nix the platform versus platform thing. Been there, done that, it's old news, we're, we're past that, we're moving on. Instead, what we're gonna do is implement a draft system like they have in the NBA All-Star Game. During this event, I ended up rooting for YouTube because I use YouTube the most out of any of the platforms. But viewers don't typically root for platforms, they root for their favorite creators. Team Ludwig, Team Hassan, Team Mizkef, think about it. The players and the fans will feel more unified under a team captain. Captains are incentivized to pick the best available player for their team, and the teams become more naturally balanced because of this. Think of the rivalries that will be born because of a draft. The captain passing over his best friend to pick a better player, and that best friend coming back around in the tournament to beam him in the face with a 7-inch foam ball. I mean, come on. The draft could happen right before the tournament, or it could happen as its own separate event. Content. Okay? Think of the content. And if you don't want to see based on my data or player performance, just pick the best streamers or the biggest streamers overall and have them be the captains. And team captains, you know who to come to if you need a scouting report, all right? All right, last but not least, I have a few messages to everybody who watched the video. I was rushing to get this done in time. Today is Saturday when I'm recording this, but voting on the streamer awards closes this upcoming Friday, January 19th. Please, please go vote for Creator Dodgeball for event of the year. I would love to see a Creator Dodgeball again this year. Also, this whole project took a lot of time and work. You probably didn't have to watch an ad at the beginning of this video because my channel isn't monetized. No ad reads, no sponsors, no nothing like that. So if you enjoyed this video, then please drop a like down below and hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Send this to your favorite streamer and let them know where they ended up in the rankings. I also stream over on Twitch, so you can go and drop a follow over there as well. I make commentary videos like this occasionally, but I also make gameplay videos. I play games with my friends, and you can check out some of my other videos if you're interested in those as well. Anyway, thanks to those of you who did for sticking around until the end of the video. And yeah. 
that's about it. Peace.